Hi everybody, welcome back to Embrace the Journey with Sharon and my guest today is Christina Merkley. She is a pioneer in vision coaching and I'm really personally excited to uh, be sharing Christina with all of you uh, because she was a catalyst in my own journey and we'll share a little bit more about that as we, as we get into this. But um, she specializes in vision and law of attraction techniques uh, and she has a company that she started called Shift It Coaching and an actual program called Shift It, which we'll have her explain a little bit more to you uh, about as well. So I'm just going to turn it over to you, Christina, and have you share a little bit about who you are and um, how you came to be, where you're at, and the gift that you're sharing with everybody. Hi, Sharon. Well, thank you. Thank you for the introduction and thank you for the invitation to be here and, and thanks for connecting up however many years ago it was where we connected and, and shared some time and then both of us have unfolded in our journey. Mm. Um, how to explain? Uh, I'm a process professional, so I'm very intrigued about what helps people change. And I have a master's degree from way back in organizational development work. And I also have a couple of interesting skill sets. So one is something called visual facilitation or visual coaching. And it's a, a visual way of working with people, with groups and with individuals. And I've really taken that work for years. I, I did uh, work with groups, doing strategic planning and visioning kinds of forums with companies, big companies all around the world. But all the way along the, the side, I'm a speaker and I'm very interested in the individual level of change as well. So I took those visual skills and I rolled them into coaching work because coaching was really emerging as a new profession and a new niche back mm -hmm. then. And um, that's where I've really played. I still, uh, I have Shifted Coach Incorporated. So we're a small boutique consulting and training firm and we do work with organizations to some extent, but we're mostly working with individuals. And I'm also training a lot of pro process professionals around the world in, in the unique ways that I work. So I work with consultants and facilitators, trainers, uh, people who have their own content expertise, mm -hmm. coaches, therapists, counselors, anybody who's working with groups or with individuals and wanting to help people change whatever process it might be that they're using. You mentioned my process shifted. Uh, but, you know, there's lots of different ways to help people transform and change. And, and I'm intrigued by all that stuff. And, and I help get these really good visual skills into people so that they can use them with whatever change work that they're doing with people as well. Now, would you say that that's your mission? Because in everything that I have learned about you in, in, in all of the uh, visuals that I've seen of you, some of your previous videos, it uh, to me that that's what I see in you and that's the essence that I feel when I listen to you speak is that um, because you are a seeker and I'm sure you can share a little bit of your story as to how how you you know what was it that kind of put you in the direction of seeking more about who you are and why you're here and what your purpose is and it seems as though you have discovered how to take the gifts that you came into this world with and actually apply them to a living for yourself. And mm -hmm. so, I mean, the best of both worlds, making a difference in the world at the same time, enjoying uh, your gifts and making a living at it as well, which is what many people want. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's certainly been an ongoing journey. Um, several decades now and it's going to continue to unfold but I, th I think the, the big picture that motivates me is um, I'm interested in harmony <laughs> so and, and I have an interest in harmony because it comes out of conflict yeah. so you know out of contrast so I have things uh, behind me that that led me early on to those questions about how can we get along right and, mm -hmm. and how can we work through the stuff that comes up in different kinds of human relationships so that we can get to a better feeling place, right? Mm -hmm. So that started with communication, like really the first thing I ever took 
early on was my, my dad had a training company and he mostly did financial management training, but he had a woman in there who did communication skills. And I talked him into when I was about 16 or 17 of letting me tag along on one of her trainings. Because I, even at that age, I was really interested about how can you communicate better, mm -hmm. right? How can you get your point across and, and listen to another person and, and come to a better resolution? So that early interest eventually got me into OD, organizational development work, where the same thing's going on. Uh, normally, companies who are inviting us in, they're going through some sort of change management process. Right, and so something again is normally in contrast. It mm -hmm. might it might be that they're just ready to go to their next level, but normally it's we're brought into these specialized kind of meetings because there's some sort of angst or something that's happened in their environment that they need to overcome. So for many years, I did those strategic planning and visioning sessions, and and so we'd be in there for two or three days, putting people through the the same kind of process past, present, future, and then closing that gap between where they are and where they want to be. And I just got really intrigued with how come we come in and do the same process, and some companies have this fantastic catalytic experience, right, mm -hmm. and change and transform, and how come others don't? So that question really intrigued me about what's the missing ingredient, right? The, what's, the, what's the thing that allowed those companies or those leaders to to take off like rocket fuel. So that quest led me to things that I know we have in common and what uh, Amazing Universe TV is all about too, which is, is um, you know, the energetics of this stuff mm -hmm. underneath. And uh, some of that, I got very intrigued with Law of Attraction work uh, via the Abraham Hicks material and really grokked in that for years and have gone on to work with uh, Sheila Gillette is a colleague of mine who's a, a trans medium for Theo and wonderful material coming through Theo as well in addition to what I studied from the Abraham Hicks material. So to me that was the missing ingredient, the missing X that was going on in there was really those leaders, you know how they talk about char charismatic leaders, charisma. Yep. So. Underneath that is, is energy, mm -hmm. right? And, and that person's aligned, and the best leaders have a way of, of and this is where pictures come in, they paint a picture, mm -hmm. right? Either through their words or literally with bringing in visual facilitators and stuff like me. They paint a picture that's so compelling that it helps elicit other people to get aligned. And, you know, I think that there's kind of like this 50 yard line that a good leader gets their people over from an energetic point of view underneath. And, and when that happens, you know, magic happens. So yes, there's all the stuff happening at the outer level, which is very important from a strategy point of view and the things that you do. But even more important is the being, right? The being of that leader, that confidence, that ability to enlist and paint that picture and enlist people in it. And then the, the, the being of all those individual people within an organization as well to um, their energy to align with that same picture, right? And that coalescing of energy is what makes things happen. So, so that was a huge aha for me, and I'm still learning about that. And, and now I've taken that strategic planning, past, present, future focus, and closing that gap between where you are and where you want to be, now I've taken that to work with individuals and business partners and families, not just the organizations, right? Mm -hmm. Why should all the good stuff be happening there? I, you know, I look at, I look at our history and I think of you because, um, well, two, a, a few things that I'm hearing you say, which I resonate with me is one, um, a leader, it, it, they listen, they hear, and, and they also see the stake. What's the stake? You know, what's, what's the place that everybody's trying to get to, even though we might be coming from different directions. And then I get the storyteller, the journey, the visual part of it, 
you know, if you look at our ancestors and you look at some of the amazing things that they're still discovering now with the Mayans and, and the Native Americans here, and I'm sure up in, up in Canada as well, the drawings, you know, it was visual. They expressed stories. They expressed history. Everything through the drawings. And you've tied, uh, it, so it was communication. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And so you're yeah. tying that together. Yeah, so the so you know, typical words around this stuff is, is vision, mm -hmm. right? So corporate vision or personal vision with what I'm doing with shift it. And and the the visual way of working fits in so beautifully because yes, you can do all this stuff auditorily. And and I was in coach school mm -hmm. and you and I have that uh in common that's part of our story that we can talk about later but yeah. um when i was taking my coach training way back when pe people wanted to work alongside me because when we were doing our different exercises like getting in touch with what it is we wanted to bring into being i would use my skills of being able to draw you know and do cute little pictorials and, and images of what people were talking about in their coaching session so it's very powerful and has been for eons as you mentioned with the cave drawings and yeah. you know just uh as a way to communicate as a way to lock something in and make it last over time too or across language mm -hmm. right across barriers there's it's a cliche but it's a cliche for a reason that a picture is worth a thousand words and we also, in my field, talk about a metaphor being worth a thousand pictures. Yeah. So if you can, if you can really lock on to a metaphor that's very powerful, and that can happen in organizations, and that can happen for individuals. Where, you know, the journey metaphor is a great one um, of where we've been and where we're going. Mm -hmm. If you pick a, a, a metaphor appropriately, so much more meaning gets conveyed right that then just through words there's a whole gestalt a whole feeling to it yeah the Where feeling a lot of attraction too, yeah right because yeah. you're, you're communicating that not just the picture but the feelings of that place yeah and the desire for that place and that's very compelling and when people can't feel it right and, and um collectively feel it then then that's what moves worlds that's what brings things into being and manifests yeah, I think uh, for me, you know, I'll tie into <clears throat> what drew me to you originally is I, I witnessed through um, some of your videos that you have up on YouTube what it is that you were doing. And you took an individual and they were sharing with you their, their past and you were drawing it. And then they were talking about where are they now and, and, you, and you drew things around that and, and where they wanted to go. And at the point that I was at when I reached out to you, which was about two years ago, a little over two years ago, I was in a space of uh, overwhelm. <laughs> But I was ready, like I knew I was ready for something, but I, but I didn't know uh, exactly what. And I, uh, I was bold enough to find your phone number and reach out and call you. And you accepted my phone call. So again, I, I thank you. Uh, I, I cannot tell you how much I appreciate you uh, opening yourself up to me that day and giving me the time just to have somebody that... You had no idea who it was. <laughs> kind of spill a little bit of their life uh, into your day. And you helped uh, give me clarity uh, in a direction that, that I wanted to go just because you listened to me. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things, I'm a very visual person, and I think one of the things that drew me to you, because I was searching at that point. I was out there searching and trying to find somebody that was going to get it, somebody that was going to get it. And what I think drew me to you is possibility. Mm -hmm. Like in, in being able to see you uh, take somebody else's story and put it up on paper for them to see it, it made it possible, seem possible. Mm -hmm. um, and that was the gift one part of the gift that you gave me was the possibility because again when you're coming from a place of 
where I was, which was feeling quite overwhelmed with some uh, the contrast that was going on in my life at that time. Uh, there's there's fear in there too, and uh, you know you get all the what I call the monkey chatter. Uh, many many people refer to as that is you know your your brain your left brain starts uh, creating boxes for you, and you allowed me to see outside of those boxes, and I think that's something that uh, is a part of your gift and. And if, if you all can see behind her, she's got a little bit of what she draws and we'll share a little bit more. And of course, we'll have her uh, website that you can go to uh, to see more about what she does. And if you're interested in taking one of her classes, she tells you, you do not have to know how to draw. <laughs> she will show you how to do that. <laughs> but that, I think, is it's the biggest thing that spoke to me. It, it, it just made it seem possible. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot in there. So I think, first off, uh, how I was trained in coaching, and I know you've gone to the same coaching school, mm -hmm. right? So that people are creative, resourceful, and whole. Mm -hmm. And it's a real solid belief that um, no matter how somebody might presenting, be presenting, right? And, and you presented very well despite your overwhelm at the moment, uh, <laughs> at that moment. Um, that they have the answers within, right? Yeah. And, and, and working with scrolls of white paper, right? And having to be there in the moment in business meetings and in meetings with individuals, I've really come to trust process mm -hmm. and to trust people, right? What else have we got, <laughs> right? To, and if you come from that kind of bigger place of, of, of believing that mm -hmm. and, and leaving space and then there is something so powerful with the visuals is I'm, I can be directed with them, but for the most part, it's reflective. So it, it is listening and it's allowing a person that space to talk and be themselves and for what's going on inside of them to be spoken and recorded. And that recording of it, it's a, it's a mirror of your own thinking, yeah. right? When, when we're up there with big sheets of paper or it can be done digitally too. But as a person's talking, we're recording out the, the snippets, the, the little golden nuggets of what they're talking about, and we're using imagery to go alongside that, which is a very powerful combination. And when people see that, it's actually not, it's not different from what's going on inside of you, but it is different in, in its tangibility and in being able to mirror back to people what they are thinking and their own answers and their own brilliance, you know, their own wisdom. Um, so I, I think that's what happened in our conversation way back when was just um, that, that space for you to talk so your own brilliance keeps circling around and around and around, right? And then there are things as a, as a coach and somebody who has, you know, manifested things in their life that I can offer too as tangible to do. So here's the place to go for this kind of setting. Here's some things to read. Here's something to consider, you know, given what I'm hearing you. But I use the analogy of the coffee table. I, I lay that down on the coffee table between us. It's up to you whether it resonates with you and you're going to pick it up. You picked it up, yeah. right? I have a lot of conversations with people and I can lay things on the coffee table, but they may, may not ever pick them up. So, I can't make anybody do anything. The transformation's on your side, right? And, and people attract who they're going to attract at a moment in time, but what they do with it is totally up to them. You know, it's so gratifying to, to receive a call after a couple of years. And, then, and also law of reciprocity comes back to you because, yes, yeah. I gave up my time. It was a lovely conversation. I'd like to help. And what's happening however many years down the road here, you're inviting me. I mean, you're in a studio in Florida. I'm so my own visual. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, and how nice. Yeah. Now I can, you know, you, you do me the honor of being able to do an interview like this. Yeah. Wonderful how it all works out. I agree. And uh, a couple of things. Um, one of the things that that I that I just got clear on when we were just having this discussion is that I think the visual part of it and one of the like I said the gifts that comes out of the uniqueness of what you do is you know I always tell people to write things down 
get it out of your head and i think visually what you do and when you when you teach people and when you when you uh, are sharing this with others uh one if they want to use it uh as a tool for themselves or two just to experience it so that they can uh discover you know where they want to go with those golden nuggets uh, it got, being listened to and getting it out of the head and getting it onto paper, it get it gets it, it's clarity. It's like, oh, there it is. I can see it. I can see it. It's no longer caught up with all those other crazy thoughts that are spinning around in my head. There's actually something there, and now I can build off of it. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Instead of the spin and the churn, right? Where you get it's really. I think of it as panning for gold. Yeah. We're panning for those gold nuggets. And when we see those and they pop into being, you're exactly right. Then you can honor your gold, right? Like, you know, you do have some gold in there, despite yeah. all the other stuff, you know, the little bits that, that need to be sifted out. Yeah. And once you identify that gold, then you can start doing something about it. And then you can get very practical, right? So this is inner work, but it's also practical outer work, too. When you know what those golden nuggets are, you're brilliant, right? That that's who you are. That's what the next step is. Then you can start to build a plan around it. Mm -hmm. And then you can deal with also the a, a big part of what I do is resistance work. So I help people clarify their visions. And then when we, not everybody, because some people can be quite aligned with their visions, but it's very normal when you start to tap into what it is you want, that you'll also have the gremlin voices. Oh, yes. You'll have, you know, you'll have that shadow stuff going, oh, yeah, who are you to want that? You can't have that. Other people can have that, but not you. Right? So that resistance pops up concurrently to the vision. And and for some people, the resistance is so loud, we got to do different things to tone it down so the vision can actually come out on the paper without it being viciously tor torn down by that inner critic. So, and so that beca it becomes this three-stage process of clarifying what a person wants, right, and what their soul, I believe, at the soul level, a soul path, right, mm -hmm. a soul mission here, clarifying what that is, uh, listening to and identifying what the resistance is so you can work with it, and also getting practical on the action level about to do right practical thing like we had conversations about practical things to go and do the action right? steps so yep actions and action yeah. plans so shift it has multiple stages but what i've just laid out are the three key ones focus on your future trouble at the border which is what i call the resistance yeah. stuff, the, that psychological <laughs> border between where you are currently and where you want to be yeah and then take action got to have all three and a lot of law of attraction stuff it is true energy alignment stuff can happen. People can knock at your doors. I've had that happen. Yeah. But you help in your rescue a lot when you start to do things that are in alignment with what it is that you want, right? As opposed to just being passive or just working it from an energy angle. Right. I agree with you 100%. Well, I think this is the perfect way to uh, end our discussion today with just the three steps that um, you just shared. And I know uh, that I, there are going to be people that are going to be reaching out to you like I did because um, who you are, the essence of who you are, your wisdom, your grace, it all comes out and it just, in your passion and your brilliance um, and how you make people feel because yet again you have made me feel empowered um, from where I am today and where I want to go um, just in this short amount of time with you so I again thank you and I um, I hope that I hope that your journey takes you to all of the places that you want to go. Um, and I thank you again from the bottom of my heart for taking, taking my phone call that day. And I look forward to our future. You know, I, I always end by saying embrace the journey because when you do, life becomes amazing. And for me, you are part of that. So I thank you very much, Christina. Oh. Thank you, Sharon, and, and ditto right back at you. And how wonderful that your journey is about helping share other people's journeys too, so it can inspire others on their own. I mean, what gorgeous work is that? 
Oh. So it's, it's my pleasure. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I think we did just that today. And again, uh, Christina's information is on my page. You can scroll down. You'll see her bio, and there's links there. And if you have any other questions, you can reach out to myself. Or I'm sure, can they go to you on Facebook? Or where? where's the best place for them to reach out to you? Yeah, uh, probably the, the most central site is the Shift It site, which is www.shift-it-coach.com. I am on Facebook uh, as Christina Merkley, mm -hmm. and uh, the company is there as well, Shift It Coach. It has its own Facebook page, and I'm a big Twitter person, so Christina Merk is my handle at Twitter. Okay, lovely. Well, again, people, don't forget to embrace the journey, because yet again, it is amazing. Thanks, Christina. Thanks, Sharon. Take good care. Bye.